Drones, especially smaller ones, have been playing a very crucial role in recent conflicts, including the war in Ukraine. They've been utilized as a reconnaissance as well as offensive tool. Ukraine forces have even deployed relatively cheap commercial drones rigged to carry explosives. Many videos are available on the internet showing Ukrainian drones targeting the Russian air defense systems without getting shot by them. Now, a damning report has come out from Russia regarding this. The 193-page report is written by Professor Sergei Makarenko of St. Petersburg Electrotechnical University (LETI) and is titled Countering Unmanned Air Vehicles. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the Russian expert has exposed the ineffectiveness of Russian air defenses against small drones. Let's get started. Before we proceed, a word on NordVPN, which is one of the most trusted VPN brands worldwide that has a no-log policy validated by Deloitte, an industry-leading Big Four auditing firm. NordVPN provides an encrypted tunnel that protects your privacy by preventing external entry to your internet traffic, as well as enabling you to access content that's blocked based on geolocation. Best of all, with one NordVPN account, you can secure up to six devices at the same time. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal with massive savings by going to nordvpn.com slash defense or clicking the link in the description. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Makarenko highlights a series of engagements involving Russian air defense systems and drones in Libya, Syria, and Nagorno-Karabakh, revealing instances where the performance of these systems fell short for the defenders. The report looks into the effectiveness of anti-air defense systems available to Russian forces. According to Professor Makarenko's findings, these air defense systems prove ineffective when confronted with drones. He emphasizes that the touted advanced features of these systems, as advertised by the developers, are not fully confirmed in practical scenarios. He iterates the near impossibility of intercepting small drones, citing the limitations that Russian radars face in detecting them. As these tactical radars are specifically designed for fast-moving jets and are less adept at tracking small, slow-moving targets. The report has specific insights on Pantsir S-1 mobile air defense, Tunguska self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, Tor SAM, Strela 10 tracked vehicles, and Igla S. Let's now check the issue with each of the key Russian air defense systems. Makarenko writes, the results of field tests showed that the target detection radar of the Tor air defense system provides detection of small UAVs at ranges of only three to four kilometers. Therefore, the Tor air defense system is unable to detect drones until they're in close proximity, making it difficult to effectively engage and shoot down the unmanned vehicles. This limitation explains how Ukrainian drones can approach Russian systems closely and capture videos. The report also adds, the practical experience of experimental firing at small targets with Tor indicates the low efficiency of their destruction. The main reasons for this are the imperfection of the SAM warhead detonation control system as well as large errors in target tracking and SAM guidance on small-sized UAVs. The Pantsir is also reported to have the same problem. The results of field tests of the Pantsir S-1 air defense systems show that firing missile weapons at small-sized UAVs is practically impossible. When the system detects a drone, it's inside the minimum missile range, making it impossible to intercept. Makarenko says, the other problem is that these air defense systems must fire ample ammunition to bring down a small drone. The use of cannon armament of these three PKs against small-sized UAVs is fundamentally possible, but due to the small size of the UAVs, the probability of their defeat is low. Viewers may note that the Pantsir S-1 combines short to medium-range surface-to-air missile 
and anti-aircraft artillery in a single platform. During a 2020 test, a group of four Pantsir systems fired at a slow-moving drone. Despite launching multiple salvos, they were unable to destroy it. Similarly, Tunguska faces the same issue, requiring a substantial amount of ammunition to stand any chance of hitting its target. Makarenko states, When firing at mini UAV of the Aquila type with cannon weapons at a distance of 3 kilometers, to achieve a value of the conditional probability of hitting a target equal to 0.5, it is necessary to expend from 4 to 13,000 shells. The Tunguska boasts a remarkable firing rate of 5,000 rounds per minute from its two cannons. However, it's equipped with only 1,904 rounds in total. Taking this information into consideration, for a drone to stand a 50% chance of being hit, it would need to remain within range for the Russian air defense operators to exhaust their ammunition, reload, and repeat the process. The Strela heat-seeking missile, which is particularly designed to target the hot exhaust of jet engines, encounters challenges in effectively locking onto small drones with minimal infrared signatures. Makarenko states, Target acquisition via the IR channel is generally impossible due to its feeble thermal radiation. He also notes that the majority of Russian surface-to-air heat-seeking missiles are equipped with impact fuses which are effective for larger targets, such as aircraft. However, when dealing with small drones, unless the missile makes direct contact, it tends to pass right by. To address this, some of the missiles have been outfitted with proximity fuses. While a limited amount of shrapnel is ideal for destroying large aircraft, it poses a risk of easily missing a small drone. The IGLA NATO reporting name SA-18 Grouse is a Soviet-origin surface-to-air missile system. This short-range, man-portable air defense system, MANPADS, has been produced since 1981. The S variant is the latest one that uses a dual waveband infrared seeker. But even the newest IGLA is known to have limited effectiveness against targets that have low IR signatures. Russians are aware of their issues and are trying everything. Russian forces have attempted to improvise by affixing RP-377 radio jammers, originally designed to disrupt signals triggering roadside bombs, onto tanks and other vehicles. The objective was to interfere with the signals controlling fast-moving first-person view drones. Unfortunately, the makeshift solution proved to be of little use. Given the fact that drone technology is evolving fast and drone swarms are becoming a reality, the report paints a grim picture. Professor Sergei Makarenko states, The number of simultaneously fired targets is limited to three for the Pantsir S-2 air defense missile system and four for the Tor M-2 air defense system. In this case, the targets being fired simultaneously must be in the viewing area of the guidance radar. As a result, it's impossible to work on targets attacking from different directions simultaneously. It's evident that there's no quick fix. It'll be interesting to see how Russia responds. Subscribe for more days. videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.